What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. So I got my hands on another Lenovo laptop to take a look at. We've got the Yoga C740 2-in-1 15.6 inch laptop here. Now I've got this in iron gray and it's a beautiful all aluminum design and this is a very very sturdy build. However slightly heavy this thing does come in at just over 4 pounds um, but a very very nice machine. So I just want to go over a few of the specs for you really quick here and then we're going to jump into um, a little closer look at the laptop, some benchmarks, checking out a game or two. We'll talk about the laptop's performance and we'll get a little bit deeper into it there. So this is the in, the 10th gen Intel Core i5, 4 core, 8 thread uh, APU that we've got with this laptop. So it might not be quite as exciting as AMD's Ryzen um, 4000 series in their uh, laptops this year, like my IdeaPad 5 with the 4500U, which is amazing. Uh, but for this 2-in-1 and for what it's intended to do, I think the performance is pretty good. Uh, so we've got also 12 gigs of RAM with this. Now that is soldered on a 256 gigabyte SSD, 15.6 inch, 250 nit anti-glare screen. Now it's not very anti-glare to be honest with you. It's very glossy and uh, the glare is definitely there. And at 250 nits, the screen does really well uh, unless you're going to be in like a really, really bright room or outside. If you're outside in the sun, it could get you. My IdeaPad 5, for example, is the 300 nit screen and I'm able to use that outside pretty well. Uh, but 250, it could give you a little bit of an issue here and there. But the screen is actually pretty nice here. It does have the 10 point multi-touch screen. This is a two-in-one completely. 360 degrees. We've got uh, Intel 9560-11AC 2x2 and Bluetooth 5.0. This is an all-aluminum chassis. You've got a 700, 700 a 720p uh, webcam on the front uh, with dual ray microphones, but it's also got the uh, privacy shutter that you can go uh, back and forth. And when you're not using your webcam, you can have that there as well. Um, like I said, I did get the iron gray version in the anodized sandblasted aluminum. Very beautiful finish on this laptop full backlit keyboard, uh, touch style fingerprint reader. So you've got the fingerprint reader on there, a 60 watt hour integrated battery. Uh, so I don't believe this battery is replaceable. It did come with the 65 watt um, USB-C charger. So it plugs into the wall, 65 watt to the USB-C. It does not have a normal uh, charging port on it at all. It just charges through the USB-C as well as that's also how you get your HDMI signal. If you want to do uh, external monitor or anything like that, it doesn't have an HDMI port on its own. Of course, we've got Windows 10 and um, I'll leave the model number here for you guys that you can see because sometimes uh, you guys want to know exactly what model number uh, we're checking out here. So let's take a little bit closer look at the laptop. Then we're going to jump into a bunch of the different benchmarks and see how this thing performs and then uh, we'll wrap everything up. All right, you can see here we have a standard headphone jack and we've got two USB type C ports here. This is what's used for charging, HDMI output and other peripherals for the laptop. We've got our pretty standard keyboard here, but we do have a full number pad and also this is a very, very quiet keyboard to type on. Doesn't make very much noise at all. We've got a dual hinge design here for the two-in-one. This is very, very sturdy and works really well and looks nice. We've got two USB ports on the side and our power slash sleep button. And on the back, we've got a couple of additional heat venting ports and we've also got the same thing on the bottom. All right, guys, so we're going to move over to Cinebench. We're going to do four tests plugged in and unplugged on both performance modes, the Whisper Quiet, Cool, and the more extreme performance. Now, I'm not going to talk throughout all of these, but I am going to speed them up for you. These are here for those of you that really, really care about seeing the thermals, the wattage, the megahertz, everything that's going on uh, with the system during these tests. So check out these Cinebench scores, all four of them here, and I'll catch back up with you here in a little bit.
All right, guys, so we're wrapping up with the fourth test here. You should have got a lot of information with these tested, plugged in, unplugged, the two different performance modes. You can see all the throttling that's happening here. There's definitely some thermal throttling and things that go on here. Um, but the system itself, though, when you're not looking at it like this, performs really well. Jumping into heaven, uh, we do have this on low settings and pretty much no tessellation, no anything. The laptop will not run it any other way, but I do like to still use heaven because a lot of people are very, very familiar with heaven benchmark and with the, uh, the settings and with the kind of performance you should expect. And this is really easy for anyone to run, so you can always compare this to any other system or you can find these tests on YouTube as well. Uh, with other systems so i like to use heaven um, still when testing these systems just to get a basis for the performance so go ahead and finish up um, i didn't run the entire thing here so check out the rest of heaven and then i'll get back in here with you when we move on to the next test All right, guys, so we're going to wrap up Heaven Benchmark, and we're going to use 3D Mark just to run Skydiver. This is a gaming laptop test, so even though this isn't a gaming laptop, any laptop that's capable of any light gaming or might be used for any kind of gaming, I like to run this test on there. I did it on the 4500U. Go check that video out on the channel uh, in the Lenovo uh, playlist if you would like to see how this ran on that. It definitely runs much better, to be honest with you, but I ran this test so you can, again, just like Heaven, get a basis for the performance of what the Intel i5 is doing here uh, with trying to run this this uh, particular benchmark. So check out the rest of this benchmark, guys. Now, you'll get your score at the end here. I cut out the additional testing that was recorded to get the score to save us some time in the video, um, but you can take your full uh, score at the end of this and go compare that online at 3 Mark uh, to other systems if you would like.
All right, so that's going to end the test. Here you go. We got a 4,721 for Skydiver. So you can use that to go online and compare that to any systems that you might want to. So moving on to PC Mark 10, this is a great way to test for some office productivity, video conferencing, all kinds of things uh, with this test. But it does take a very long time to run. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut out a majority of it and get you right to the score so that you can use that to go uh, compare as well to other systems and how uh, it might perform. So 4,091, and you can see all the different scores there for your productivity, digital content creation, essentials, and everything else that you've got going on there. So use all that information to help figure things out for you there. All right, so moving over to Rogue Company, we're going to do 720p all low settings. I wanted to get 60 FPS and above, otherwise I would have ran 1080, uh, but that would have kept me more around the 30 FPS range. So we're going to check out Rogue Company. It ran really, really well at 720p low settings, and that's why I figured you can definitely do some light gaming on this 2-in-1. It won't be as fantastic or as, as much as you could do with something like a Ryzen 4500U or 4800U or something, um, but it actually did a very good job. So let me know if you want to see other game testing or any other test as well here. So check out the rest of Rogue Company, and then I'll catch back up with you guys when we wrap up the video. Reinforcements remaining. Don't stand too close to the flame. All right, that's going to bring us to the end of our video for the Lenovo C742N1 laptop. I hope this gave you a lot of information about this laptop. You were able to see a lot of performance on thermal numbers and everything in uh, Cinebench, ran plugged in, unplugged, and in both different performance modes that are available there. We've got some Heaven Benchmark in there, some PC Mark Test for you for um, productivity and for gaming, and then, of course, Rogue Company thrown in there as well, which ran just fine at low 720p because I was trying to target that 60 and above FPS now on 1080p. That would be more like 30 FPS most of the time and uh, really just wasn't quite as smooth even with everything on low. So light gaming on this laptop, yes, not as good as something like the new Ryzen mobile that's out, the 4000 series or even the 4500U um, does destroy the Intel all the way up to the Core i7 here, uh, 10th gen in all numbers, Cinebench and gaming and all of that. But for what this laptop does, I think it's really good. This is a beautiful laptop. It's built really well. I love the all aluminum. I love the iron gray color of this one. And uh, the 250 nit screen doesn't bother me that much because I'm inside most of the time. It's not super bright where I'm at. Um, like I said, I think the only time you'd really have trouble is maybe if you're out in the direct sunlight um, and that kind of thing or super bright rooms. But uh, everything performing really well. Now, fan noise, because I know a lot of you are going to ask about that. For fan noise, it's um, no matter what on intelligent uh, cooling, like the quiet mode, it's pretty quiet and cooler anyway, a lot like IdeaPad 5 with intelligent cooling. When you go to the more extreme performance mode and you increase the thermals and the performance and the wattage and all that kind of stuff, of course the fan has to ramp up. It does not get as loud as the IdeaPad 5 I have uh, that I've tested here on the channel, but you can hear it. It's a little bit higher pitch than the IdeaPad 5's fan, but it's not as loud. So um, if you guys want more testing on fan noise, speakers, audio latency, black magic, any of that kind of stuff like you've asked me for before on the other uh, laptop, just let me know 
And I usually put all those things together and I'll make another video. If you want to see more game testing with this laptop, that's fine. We'll throw together some light gaming and do some testing on here. If you want to see any direct comparisons to the 4500U that I have uh, that I test here as well, let me know. Any of that kind of stuff, put it in the comments or join the Discord even better and get easier access to me and put your request in there of what you would like to see. And I'll be glad to do some more testing on this laptop for you. So I think that'll pretty much cover it for now. A beautiful, well built nice two-in-one from Lenovo. The core i5s, i7s, i3s from Intel are not as impressive this generation, especially with what AMD is doing. But for work, office, school, YouTube, Netflix, some very light gaming, things like that, this is going to do just fine. So thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. I really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Ring that notification bell. Give this video a thumbs up and leave me your comments down below and go join the Discord and let me know what you would like to see. Thanks again and I'll see you guys in the next one.